when I first met Rhys Jones, I learned that he invented the most efficient DNA printer on the planet. This is the printer which print DNA. It put atoms into right sequence. So this can be a very new DNA and a new form of life. So if, if you have an idea to launch a new form of life, you put it on the computer, connect with Rhys Jones printer, and this printer will put this DNA and it will be new form of life. So Rhys Jones uh, also co-founded Singularity University, and uh, I'm happy to pass the word to you. Then please uh, tell about yourself, and then we will turn to your presentation. Okay, do you have a microphone? Yeah, I do. Great. Uh, good afternoon, my name's Rhys, and uh, I'm a biophysicist by training and background, and uh, one of the things I've done is help start Singularity University, which teaches people about technologies that change fast and uh, how to use those to solve problems at scale. And can we have the slides up? So uh, to set some context for this afternoon and the conference, uh, I thought I'd start with an experiment of uh, talking about the genetics of blockchain and the evolution of blockchain. And the, uh, if you want to remember one thing about this is that blockchains uh, are subject to natural selection just like animals and uh, biological creatures in that there are different ones and they will survive or, or go extinct based on their characteristics. And one of the parallels of, uh, of genetic information is that it, it's stored in a medium. And blockchain is another medium that stores information. And these things have a lot of similarities, but they're not precisely the same. And so we'll go through some of those similarities that might be able to help you have a framework to predict the future of how blockchain will evolve. Um, based on lessons learned from the evolution of, of living things. And the thing about the future um, is that, it, that history doesn't repeat itself, as is often said, but uh, history does rhyme. Uh, so patterns that I'm gonna talk about today from the uh, history of evolution in biology are, seem to be happening with the evolution of blockchain but they're not precisely the same, and it's not a precise one-to-one -one mapping, but they're similar enough that a, a lot of lessons can be learned and, and, and things maybe can be predicted uh, that are likely to happen. And so uh, human uh, DNA, our DNA in our bodies, uh, there's about three billion base pairs or six billion letters, and uh, the human genome is, is about one and a half gigabytes, and that's, the, the information necessary to build another one of, of each of us. And that, that's about the amount of information that fits on two CDs. Whereas uh, blockchain has already substantially passed that by uh, an order of magnitude or two, in that uh, the blockchain, its current size is, is about 150 gigabytes, um, and that's uh, enough information to store on 100 CDs. And the, the blockchain, as you can see on the chart on the left, passed the uh, human genome in size in about 2012. And so it's already substantially more data than a human genome. And of course, each of us has a, a separate human genome, and so in the room, there's a lot of us, and that uh, is a lot of information. And you can see in the middle here how the blockchain is growing, or this is the Bitcoin blockchain specifically, and that it's predictable in the present and the future in that the way the blockchain grows is something that is mathematical. And so the chart on the right is uh, the, the forecast of the blockchain where um, in a few years it'll have grown from 150 gigabytes to about one terabyte of size so that each mining node or live node on the Bitcoin blockchain will have to store a full terabyte of information, which is the history of the 10 years or more later 
of uh, all the transactions, every transaction that has happened on the blockchain. And uh, this will double again by uh, 2040 when, when it times out. And so what are blockchains and how are they uh, related to genetics? And so it, what's often uh, taught in sort of introduction to blockchain is uh, how it works and that it's a voluntary system and that all the parties participating in it volunteer to do their transaction and record it in a blockchain and the uh, um, mechanism, whether it's mining based on proof of work or proof of stake or other techniques of mining, is uh, something that people volunteer to do as well, uh, thousands ideally. And so they're, all of the participants are volunteers. And so the life forms that code their information and live on DNA are in a way volunteering to do the same. And it's a borderless blockchain. Um, and the uh, uh, genetic uh, information is kind of the original gangsters of blockchain in that for billions of years now, the uh, genetic information is stored in DNA and it's replicated in DNA, which doesn't have borders, it's decentralized, it's distributed, and it's uh, a replicating system. So those same criterion that are, are often described for blockchain are, uh, are also the same uh, for DNA and genetic evolution. And then uh, in uh, blockchain is a framework of how do you do the transactions and how do the transactions get executed into tokens with uh, distributed applications that validate the tokens and then uh, more elaborate systems um, that uh, is a framework that is, is both decentralized and trustable. And then finally, the protocol um, is something that is in the blockchain, is, is in a, a hash that can be recognized. And so you can say, is the thing in this block record accurate or not based on its hash? But you can also pull the other nodes to say, is this trustable? Has, anybody, has everybody confirmed it and has anybody rejected it? And so it creates, uh, by protocol, a trusted system where you can uh, rely on the information that's there. And so uh, DNA genetics has all these same criterion in that it's voluntary, borderless, decentralized, distributed. It's a replicating system. It has a framework for how genes begin and end, and it has a protocol for how the genes are, are replicated and how they're expressed into metabolism. And so information replication uh, in a blockchain, uh, there's the ledger, and it has uh, reliability already 100 times more than DNA. Uh, it's a distributed mining system uh, that does the replication. Uh, in biology, there's various ways to do replication. It's trustable because of its framework and its protocol. It's fast enough uh, to do useful work. Uh, and, and in the case of the Bitcoin blockchain, it uses a lot of energy. We'll touch on that. Um, so in biology, there's this similar parallel things. And these are, as I mentioned, not exactly one-to-one -one maps, but they're useful. Uh, to, as a way to think about blockchain in the future, and that um, one of the reliability scale limits of, of DNA is uh, a, there's an error rate of one error in about 10 to the ninth copies. And so if you have a, a, a piece of DNA or, or a set of chromosomes like a person that has 10 to the ninth uh, bits of information, each time it replicates, there's likely one new error introduced. And so you can't have a lot more DNA uh, where you don't end up uh, replicating errors or accumulating errors as, as you grow. And although there are some species, um, axolotls, uh, for example, or plants that have substantially more DNA than people, um, they still have an error rate in their replication. And then um, the uh, DNA protocol, what is the gene, is somewhat uh, trustable because of its protocol in that uh, if something is coded in DNA, it's limited in the kinds of ways it can be coded, and it's recognizable as it's the beginning and the end of the information in the same way as a block. Um, and it's a parallel system uh, that replicates in a distributed way, as I mentioned. Uh, and then there's an issue in, in biology of efficiency, or how much energy is used to replicate DNA. And one of the substantial differences between uh, 
genetics uh, and blockchain so far is that genetics doesn't keep all of the information since uh, all history of, of four billion years of, of evolution of, of genetic information. It throws away blocks um, and only keeps that are useful. Where the current Bitcoin uh, blockchain keeps everything from the original Genesis block by Satoshi Makamoto to uh, uh, where we are today, every single transaction is kept and replicated into the next blockchain uh, record. And that um, uh, is trustable and reliable and an efficient enough protocol. But as it gets bigger, uh, perhaps over thousands or millions or billions of years, it may make uh, evolve um, a way to say, we'll only keep the information that is important and relevant as opposed to every single transaction. And, uh, and partly this is because of the energy that's required to do the replication and the random error rates that happen in the replication. And so in uh, uh, blockchain mining, um, it, the energy is generally electrical, um, which is used to make a copy, verify the copy, and uh, retain the trust, and, and so forth. And then in biology, the energy that's used for metabolism and replication generally comes from food. And so there's a, um, uh, how do you get the energy to replicate and, and continue on the, the species is something that is also parallel and, and an important part of biology and, and it will likely be an important part of blockchain. And the graph in the middle is sort of the uh, super exponential growth of, of the compute power. In this case, it's petahashes, but that correlates very much to energy that's electrical energy that's consumed to uh, calculate a, a block transaction. Um, and, uh, and so as the chips get more efficient, uh, even so, the energy that they use continues to go up, where it's likely that just the Bitcoin's uh, blockchain uh, will um, consume more electricity than everything else that people do if it continues on the present trend. So uh, another note about the trust in uh, the system where um, DNA is pretty good to uh, billions of, of pieces of information that replicate reliably from uh, cell to cell and one generation to the next. And it has a framework and so biology can generally trust that the information coded in genes is something that should be reproduced, and so it, it, uh, it does so with some level of distributed trust, where there isn't a centralized bank or central government of genetics that says, we are regulating the genetic code and, and your code is not valid if we don't um, uh, uh, approve it. It's, a, it's decentralized, it's distributed, and it's trustable um, nonetheless. And so blockchains uh, express themselves or metabolize as tokens or distributed apps or eventually distributed organizations. And these organizations are essentially the metabolism of blockchain species. And this is not an exact parallel, but it's something that gives you some intuition about how things work. And so the way uh, a species works, or the, the flow of information, if you will, in biology is there's the code of, of you as a parent or from your parents that is expressed in DNA, which is the genetics of you as a species uh, and an individual. And when it's in our cells, the DNA code that's there uh, is turned into RNA, that is turned into proteins, that is turned into metabolism, which is our life or how we live in, from a chemical point of view and a behavioral point of view and so forth. So this is information flow in biology and the same uh, thing happens likely with, with blockchains and bitcoins or other tokens and apps where there's the code of the chain, which is like the species, and then the, the tokens and apps are metabolism of that species. And so one of the interesting parallels is how do these things relate and when, what uh, predictions can you make about the future assuming these relations are, are similar. And so uh, blockchain, the metabolism is, is tokens and apps. And the genome, the metabolism is, is the uh, life cycle of a species, but also the ecosystem that it lives in. And then speciation is where uh, a species becomes two different kinds of creatures. 
in that the, uh, they eventually evolve into, say, plants and animals, and those uh, don't, aren't the same species anymore, but they may have had a common origin and that's speciation, which happens in biology, and likely, again, will happen with blockchains. And so speciation is kind of driven by a concept called natural selection, which comes from Darwin, which is uh, how um, the fitness of a species uh, is how well it, it works in its environment. And so the, those individuals' uh, species that uh, are fitter to the environment are more likely to survive and continue to reproduce and so forth and will become more prevalent and those that are less adapted will either find a different niche or they'll go extinct. And this is likely happening to uh, blockchains and, and tokens and such or likely will uh, continue. And the important thing about natural selection is it doesn't just happen to biological creatures, it happens to people, it happens to religions, it happens to governments, it happens to banking systems in that the fittest ones uh, uh, survive and the uh, tech, um, like, uh, you know, sil silicon versus ga gallium arsenide uh, semiconductors, uh, natural selection determines which ones are gonna survive and which not. Um, and then people get involved in directing the evolution of these things through concepts like selective breeding or uh, farming where monocultures of a desirable thing like a, an Irish potato are cloned. Um, and there's a problem with cloning something where one of the reasons why standardizing on, say, Bitcoin's blockchain uh, proof of work um, method of, of replicating the information works for some things, for some applications, but it's probably not the best idea uh, for all applications. So uh, monoculture is, is like picking rice or corn or, or potatoes or, or beef of some kinds and saying we're gonna breed more of this and we're gonna optimize for our desired characteristics. And that's farming and that works to some extent, but there's a vulnerability in it in that if all of the uh, creatures in a species are more or less the same, they're genetically clones, then uh, a parasite or a bug can uh, infect and uh, wipe out the entire population the more similar they are. And so there's a, a famous ethnobiotanist who uh, uh, has a phrase that monoculture breeds disease or it creates an environment that festers disease that wipes out species. And this may happen to blockchains unless there is a diversity of them. And so how biology has evolved is, is into what's called a tree of life, where the uh, uh, microbes and plants and animals have all evolved from a common ancestor, an original blockchain, if you will, um, and this will likely happen to blockchains as they exist today. And a new species is something that maybe isn't so predictable, and that, uh, that might be a, a combination of, of two different kinds of, like if, uh, if the Ethereum blockchain and the Bitcoin blockchain were to have a baby, what would it be? Um, and, and it would probably be a different species than either of them. And so here's a, um, a complicated graphic of the tree of life from the original um, uh, Genesis DNA creature and all of the diversification into different species and subspecies are along that arc. Uh, over um, uh, several hundred million years, or billions of years, actually, and that uh, everybody on that chart, from, from mammals to birds to plants to microbes, are cousins of each other. So we're cousins of every other kinds of species that exist today and existed in the past, in that we're essentially forking from the original blockchain into many different ones. Um, and so Dar Darwin himself says that uh, the, the natural selection of which of those species survives and doesn't isn't um, the one that is uh, the strongest or the most intelligent. It's the one that is best suited to its application or to its environment. And that's likely true of, of blockchains. Um, and as I mentioned, the, the natural selection uh, favors diversity in that uh, th which is sort of the opposite of, of monoculture in that many different species 
uh, will uh, be a more stable system than if everything is the same. So for example, Bitcoin's blockchain uses a lot of energy and if there's a solar flare which wipes out the electrical grid which makes using energy um, uh, unfavorable, uh, maybe a more efficient, less energy consuming variation of that will survive better and become more popular than the one that is popular today where we have excess electrical energy. Um, and then uh, genetics is more complicated than just the code of the DNA and that there are memes and, uh, and epigenetic codes and different kind of layers of complexity of coding information that perhaps have not evolved in, in cryptocurrencies or, or dApps or, or, uh, or blockchains. Uh, and one of the things about the distant past of biology is there was a evolution into diversity, something called the Cambrian explosion, which was uh, about um, half a billion years ago, or 500 million years ago, around the time that uh, sensors like eyes were uh, first invented in biology, and that the number of species um, went from a few, like there's a less than a thousand different kinds of blockchains now, to uh, several million in a pretty quick uh, path. And so this is likely to happen where uh, instead of the, you know, less than a thousand blockchain styles or species that there are now, it will likely evolve into many millions of different ones and the, they will all coexist, but each one will be subject to sort of natural selection and, and they won't all exist the same depending on the environment um, of, of the blockchains, one or others will be selected. And so this future is sort of a, perhaps a crypto explosion from a few to millions of different variations of blockchains, some of which will go extinct and some of which will become dominant species in their niche, but uh, the, the point being that there will likely be a, a much wider diversity than there is now. And so in the further future, um, there, this may be part of an evolutionary trend where we are our DNA, but we're also our uh, cultural upbringing and we're our credit report and our medical history and our banking records and our you know, crypto wallets. And so who we are as a, as a person is evolving from a biochemical to electrical or a hybrid thereof. Um, and this uh, is sort of a, a situation where we're information and our information that we think about traditionally is our biological, physical, chemical self is one thing, but we're adding much and more um, uh, memes and cultural upbringing and electrical information that is part of who we are. And the percentage of us that is digital is now becoming much more than the percentage of us that's, that's genetic. And information by its nature flows in that uh, what is a person is, is not just a, you can take a snapshot of, of what is my genetics, what is my, uh, you know, electric records, um, but that information is, is flowing through time and changing through time, or who I was yesterday is not who I am today, and who I'll be tomorrow is different than who I am today, again. And so, uh, if you think about that from a personal point of view, that who, who each of us are as a person is something that is continuously changing in that we're a lot more like a wave than we are a particle. And our personality is changing uh, and, and we're riding as a, as a being on a wave of information that's partly biological and partly electronic. So, thank you.